Ja, das nochmal. So, das ist nochmal. Okay, sorry, yeah. So uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for uh, uh, coming to my uh, Latin talk, basically. And I have, I have prepared uh, uh, more than 20 slides, but I tried to be quick and uh, to beat the <laughs> time restriction. So yeah, today, and uh, I just want to share some uh, actually uh, recent uh, uh, work that developed in my lab. Uh, instead of talking about the biological discovery, I would do more, I think, focus on the algorithm of the pipeline that we developed, which can uh, process uh, uh, encode data. So uh, in early 2000, we know we have the first uh, human genome draft that was uh, completed by uh, 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 our uh, like, uh, public and private uh, sequencing consortium. But the time and the efforts involved in the sequencing were tremendous, which is not uh, realistic to process uh, or deal with uh, lots of individual uh, samples. So that, uh, that uh, come to the uh, next general sequencing technology. Uh, from this figure and uh, also pull out from our NHGRI website, and we can see the sequencing cost has been tremendously decreased. Uh, and uh, so now it's uh, more realistic to make a multiple sequencing, uh, uh, like uh, uh, finish the at a lower cost in a very uh, short time period. So the ENCODE project, I think everyone here knows the purpose of ENCODE, uh, ENCODE project is to identify functional element. It has lots of uh, sick data. So, so, uh, so here actually I want to focus on the RNA sick data, which uh, basically uh, it's all the just uh, just bottom of side. So I just uh, use this uh, data to study uh, uh, the uh, uh, alternative splicing. So, uh, so the Inco data set and from uh, uh, the one that I downloaded, uh, actually mainly Tom's lab. So uh, there are uh, lots of uh, cases actually has not just a single end, has a parent and also lots of replicate uh, samples have been uh, be performed. Uh, uh, for the sequencing. So alternative splicing I mentioned earlier is like uh, from one gene you really could be uh, transcribed into multiple MRAs, right? And from uh, uh, MRA level and uh, then uh, could be uh, translated into different ISO forms. So uh, this is uh, uh, make the, our the gene uh, like expression more complicated. Uh, so the uh, Correspondingly, there are lots of tools that have been developed uh, to study the alternative splicing. So we have developed a tool called uh, the read split uh, walk at initially, and uh, then now the current version called the read split run. Basically, this is a software uh, of the pipeline which can identify the novel splicing uh, junctions uh, uh, at genome-wide level. Uh, we compared our tools to other uh, some uh, typical uh, splice junction detection tool like top head or star and some other things, and uh, our tools actually outperformed in identify special type of the uh, splicing uh, mechanism, uh, uh, both in accuracy and the running the time things. And due to time restriction, I will not take the uh, time to introduce this biological story uh, uh, behind for discovering this algorithm. So Instead, I was to talk a little bit about more the recent update about this pipeline, so called the split fly. And this one actually uh, has, uh, uh, has been improved a lot recently by uh, uh, increasing the uh, uh, 
sensitivity and the uh, uh, decrease the running time. So specifically, we uh, uh, the newer version uh, can be uh, let's say the applied to uh, rescue the read hives from the bottom X file, which is used in the pipeline as the first alignment step. So this increases the uh, sensitivity a lot. So if we look at uh, uh, the comparison from previous version recipe run with the newer version recipe fly, and we got the mouse mouse data here, which is not in code data, but as a positive control when we develop this algorithm. Uh, so we got both the number of ma mapped read for the both the uh, experimental conditions actually significantly increase. So running time, the in terms of the memory usage and the uh, like CPU time, we all get a great improvement. So what does this say is that this new algorithm can process a large uh, uh, number of data in a quick manner and a more efficient way. So in addition, this new algorithm actually can uh, extract the supply sequence after we uh, de detect the supply junctions and to study its biological function. Uh, so the first focus we was to look at is uh, uh, what type of intro sequences that have been uh, 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 extracted and uh, what's the prevalence for the for the for the data set that we uh, studied so the uh, two type of the uh, uh, intro right and we know that you really uh, have been supplies like one is like you you two type uh, the other is u12 type so u2 type more like the major splicing use different splice factors you have some minor splicing so they have different uh, splicing uh, signature for the like GTAG and uh, U12 also has ATAC and uh, not just GTAG cases. Their branch point sequence also are different. So what we what we have done for this uh, algorithm is that we have used uh, our new algorithm to apply the encode data set. Then we compare the prevalence between U12 and U2 type. So interestingly, we found actually there are lots of uh, U12 signatures occurs in the novel uh, uh, supply sequences. That means that those are not follow the traditional canonical supplies of things. And uh, this one uh, also said, uh, and there could have lots of interesting biological uh, signatures available in the encode data set. So the RSF uh, pipeline also has a blast uh, uh, function which actually uh, uses the uh, microarray database to look at some microarray, uh, uh, microarray uh, signatures in the supplies sequence. Uh, so we actually uh, also did a brief uh, check for this uh, 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 microarray database to, to see whether there is a prevalence or there are some disease associated microarrays available in the, in the encode data set. So uh, this is also for the same 21 encode samples and we, we do see uh, some microarrays have been actually reported uh, actually uh, uh, more than half of these 21 samples. That means uh, uh, there are certain microarrays could also be prevalent and also some of them, actually two of them have been involved in the, uh, some type of diseases. So in the summary, and uh, this said that uh, our algorithm can process encode data and to identify some interesting biological signatures. And uh, right now the preliminary data for these 21 samples and uh, we have noticed the uh, lots of U12 type non kinetic splicing actually is available uh, in this encode the data set and more than the U2 uh, type. So uh, we have developed a website for this uh, software and uh, this is still the older version, the recently run, and it can take the user input files that report the output. And I think next version for SR, uh, uh, for ISR, we would like to actually take the encode samples uh, through the website and classify them into the tissue type. And Tom just give a talk today, I think it'd be very, very cool, maybe uh, separate them into different cell types and then report the findings. So this is uh, uh, my lab, and uh, so uh, uh, Dr. Kenny is on the left side, and Dr. Gearsor is a uh, uh, meritorious professor. He's actively still involved in the research, and the fund, uh, who is the person who developed this pipeline, and now work at Google. So uh, that's pretty much today I want to introduce, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah.